Welcome back. It is day eight and today we're going to be talking about how do humans create new varieties of plants and animals. Now I am going to warn you guys, the ice cream truck started its jingle like right as I was about to start this recording. So I'm hoping you guys can't hear it in the background. But if you can, maybe just like sing along as you watch. I probably will by the end of this video. Um, but today is going to be the first day we start talking about something called genetic engineering or genetic modification. Right, and this is the process. That is the worst G I've ever drawn. Um, genetic engineering is how scientists intentionally manipulate um, the genetic material of an organism, right? And today we're going to be talking about one specific example of genetic engineering um, that you've probably encountered in your life before. But before we get to that, you guys have got an extended do now. So this is actually going to be a little bit different than do nows we've done before. This time I'm going to read through this passage with you guys. Um, and we're going to underline important information as we go. That way, when we get to the end of the passage, you guys will pause the video and answer questions one through four based on what we read. So let's get started. For thousands of years, we have produced new varieties of plants and animals. We did this by selectively breeding plants and animals for particular traits. Oh man, the ice cream truck's gonna drive me crazy. To breed means to mate or reproduce. Selective breeding takes advantage of genetic variation occurring in nature. In other words, the great variety found in wild plants and animals makes selective breeding possible. Selective breeding is often called artificial selection because rather than letting nature decide what animals breed, humans intervene. Humans use selective breeding to pass wanted traits onto the next generation of organisms. American botanist Luther Burbank may have been the greatest selective breeder of all time. He developed more than 800 kinds of plants. Burbank, Burbank used selective breeding to cross or mate organisms that have different traits to bring together the best of both organisms. The offspring made by such crosses are called hybrids. Many of Burbank's hybrid crosses mixed the disease resistance of one plant with the food making ability of another. The results were new lines of plants that had the traits farmers needed to make more food. Now, I earlier said you've probably experienced selective breeding in your lifetime before. And that's because many of the dog breeds that we currently have, in fact, all of the dog breeds that we currently have are because of selective breeding and the way that humans have intentionally bred these dogs over time to create new breeds, right? If you found a really smart dog, right? Or a really happy dog, you might want to breed those dogs together to get a smart and happy dog. Um, and one example of how this has happened is how we got the Labradoodle. So one day someone decided, hey, I wonder what would happen if I mixed a Labrador Retriever with a Poodle. And what happened was we produced the Labradoodle. Now this is a really, really expensive dog um, because these two or organisms have to be bred in just a way um, to have this happen successfully. Um, so because of that, because it doesn't just naturally happen in nature, it is a really rare and really expensive breed to make. People pay like thousands of dollars to get a Labradoodle, um, which is kind of crazy. But I'm sure you can think of other examples of where people have bred different dogs together to try to get a really rare or really pretty breed. Um, but if you're like me, I just get my dog from the animal shelter. I'll take a mutt. Um, but now guys, pause this video and answer questions one through four based on what we read. So number one, based on what we read, define selective breeding in a complete sentence. So you should have said something along the lines of selective breeding is when humans choose which animals and plants breed together in order to pass on wanted traits to the offspring. So this happens a lot actually with racehorses, with people who race horses for money um, because they want to have the strongest and the fastest horse possible, right? They're trying to win that cash. So what happens is people will, will breed really, really strong horses with really, really fast horses, hoping that that offspring that they create will be a really fast and strong horse. So it's combining the best of both, um, of multiple traits or of, of the same organism. Hold on, let me say that again. Combining the best traits found in multiple organisms, hoping that when they reproduce, they will pass on both of those great or all of those great traits onto their kids. All right, so I'm gonna write that down. So strong horse plus fast horse 
leads to a strong and fast horse. Right, so with selective breeding, we're trying to pass on the best possible traits. Number two, selective breeding is also referred to as what? So we also call selective breeding artificial selection. And this is basically the opposite of natural selection. So with natural selection, things happen according to nature, all right? They're happening on their own, it's natural. But with artificial selection, this is man-made. Meaning that humans are getting involved with this process and forcing things to happen that wouldn't naturally occur. So this is artificial selection is definitely human intervention, um, which can be good, but can also have some pretty detrimental effects as well that we'll talk about in just a second. Number three, in the text, Luther Burbank was able to create a plant that produced food and resisted a certain disease. How did he do this? Well, again, selective breeding is trying to get the best of, of both worlds. We're trying to get the best traits possible. So to do this, he crossed a disease resistant plant with a food making plant. And when he crossed those two together, he ended up with the offspring that had both of those traits um, and was both a disease resistant plant and a food making plant. It was a hybrid that had both of those traits. And number four, the Labradoodle is a product of selective breeding. Explain what this statement means. So the Labradoodle is a result of humans mating together a Labrador retriever and a poodle. Right. Again, we were trying to take those two great breeds and combine them to make an even better breed, um, which I'm sure the Labradoodle is a great dog, but it's also really expensive. I'm just really still caught on this. One of my friends is currently deciding on whether or not she should get the Labradoodle. I don't know if I support it. Let me know if any of you guys have a Labradoodle. Let me know. Are they, is it worth it? I don't know. Now, selective breeding has its benefits, right? We can get new plants, we can get new animals, but it also has several, several setbacks um, and several problems for the animals that we intervene with. And one example of this is the English Bulldog. The Bulldogs, God bless them, have several, several health effects because of what we have done to them. So they have been inbred for hundreds, if not thousands of years, um, which has left them with some pretty just not the best traits, okay? So their snouts are really, really short, which means they have trouble breathing. They're prone to sleep apnea. Their jaw structure leads to dental problems. They have problems with their heart. They're prone to choking fits because of how their breathing is set up. Their tongue is too big at the base. Their eyes are prone to cataracts. They're sensitive to overheating and stroke. They're susceptible to cancers. The list goes on. Um, and because of this, they don't live very long either. Their lifespan, the median lifespan is only about 8.4 years. And this is because of what we have done to them. So humans kept trying to breed the perfect bulldog and inbred the best English bulldog, trying to make it better. And unfortunately, all we did was make it worse. Now bulldogs, I'm sure are very cute, but we have really screwed them over um, just because of all these health effects that we have caused them to have. So. Again, this is due to human intervention. This is not something that would have happened naturally. This is something that we did to them. Another example, um, you may have seen this guy on, I think it was called Tiger King, that documentary from last year. Um, but another example of selective breeding is the Liger and Tigons, where we breed together lions and tigers. This is not something that happens naturally. Lions and tigers do not mate together in the wild. This only happens in captivity when we force them to. Um, and again, this comes with several, several health effects for those ligers and tigons. Um, because it's not natural, they have a shorter lifespan. They're more prone to strokes. They're more prone to cancer. They have heart defects because their body is just simply not the way it's supposed to be. Um, and something, another fun fact about ligers and tigons is they're actually barren, which means they cannot reproduce. They cannot produce fertile offspring um, because like lions and tigers have a different chromosome number. So when you combine those two chromosome numbers, their DNA basically kind of freaks out and can't reproduce properly. Um, so if you have any questions about that, please reach out. I would love to talk more about that. But this is another example of just when humans get involved, we don't always get the best outcomes for these animals. All right. 
Now I've got two words of the day for you. The first word I want you guys to write down is genetic engineering. Now this is the deliberate modification of the characteristics of an organism by manipulating its genetic material. So again, this is the deliberate or intentional modification by manipulating the genetic material. So tomorrow we're gonna to start talking about some more specific genetic engineering techniques involving the use of CRISPR or some more modern day usages um, with some cool new technology. But we're also gonna talk more about selective breeding. So selective breeding, what is it? We need to write down that this is the process by which humans choose which animals or plants mate together to selectively develop particular genetic traits in offspring. All right, so with genetic engineering, we're like actually manipulating the specific genes. With selective breeding, we're mating together different organisms and hope that they will pass on the best possible traits. All right, so pause this video, write down those definitions. And then I want you to hypothesize. I want you to tell me, do you think selective breeding is a type of genetic engineering? Why or why not? So make sure you give me some evidence there. Pause this video and press play when you're ready to review it. All right, so the short answer here is yes, right? Because with, let me go back, with genetic engineering or with selective breeding, both of them involve manipulating the genetic qualities, right? We're trying to pass on the best traits um, with selective breeding and that involves modifying or deciding which genes get passed on. But selective breeding doesn't always work out in our favor. And that's why genetic, genetic engineering and some of the more um, modern techniques with gene editing tools are a little bit more specific because you're able to specifically change one gene or different genes that are present in an organism. So the answer here is kind of yes and no. Selective breeding is a type of genetic engineering, um, but a lot of genetic engineering that we're going to talk about tomorrow is a little bit more high tech than these selective breeding tools. Um, selective breeding has actually been used by humans for hundreds of thousands of years um, since basically the dawn of time. We've been making new animals and plant species. But genetic engineering is a little bit more high tech. Okay, so the answer is yes, it is an example, but we're gonna talk about some more specific examples tomorrow. So whatever you put here is totally fine. I'm not going to be checking those answers for, for correctness. <laughs> correctness, is that a word? Um, but I just wanted to see what you guys thought. All right, now I've got one last passage for you guys and then we are done for the day. So selective breeding results in advances in agriculture as well. Long before Europeans came to the new world, Native Americans selectively bred teosinti. Teosinti is a wild grass native to central Mexico. And teosinti was selectively bred to make corn. Corn is a far more productive and nutritious plant than teosinti. Corn is also now one of the world's most important crops. Modern corn was selectively bred from teosinti at least 6,000 years ago. But over time, the hard case around the kernel disappeared, which left the rows of soft kernels we enjoy today. The plant has also been bred to become larger and produce more. So now I want you to imagine you're sitting at the dinner table tonight and your mom and your dad places a giant bowl of corn in front of you, okay? And you turn to the other people at the table and you say, hey, did you know that corn actually wasn't always like this? And your little sister, your little brother looks at you and is like, you're crazy. That's, there's no way. Corn has always been like this. What do you mean? I want you to explain how modern corn developed from Teosinti based on this passage. So on your paper, you should explain how modern corn developed from Teosinti and be sure to identify and explain the process that was used to create this. All right, write down this explanation so that when your little sister or brother asks you tonight, you can tell them and you are able to convince them that corn wasn't always like this. All right, guys, that is all I've got for you today. The only other thing you need to do is I cannot speak. What is happening to me? Um, is complete your exit ticket and submit these notes on Google Classroom. Have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you guys tomorrow.